flashing. Welcome to season five, episode eight of Siren Sundays with me, your host, Lashanti the Siren. This show is focused on speaking with researchers, scientists, and practitioners of environmental science and all things conservation. You are now tuning in to our conservation conversation, and today's guest is Renique Forbes. Welcome to the show. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here. Lovely. So let the people know, who are you and what do you do? So my name is Renique Forbes, and I have been interested and invested in conservation for a long time, but I work inside the hospitality industry. So it was about finding my love for animals, the Bahamas, and then, of course, for service along with and tying it into what I do now, which is a conservation manager. Lovely. So can you give us a brief intro about your educational experience and your background with work and what was it, maybe something from your childhood that got you interested in working with conservation and sustainability? So it's a funny story how I got interested in conservation at all. Well, not that funny, but I find it <laughs> geeky from it. <laughs> but I started with a love for animals. Like I grew up in a camp road with my grandmom and I always had like these random stray dogs that would follow me everywhere, put me on the school bus. So I always had this love for animals and nature and things like that. And when I went into uh, high school, I was like, well, I'm going to be a veterinarian. And then like around in grade 12, I was like, I'm going to be a zoologist. And I was like, okay, this is, I just want to focus on all the animals. And when I was in grade 12, um, I was applying for COB at the time, now University of the Bahamas. And I got involved with biochemistry because I, you know, wanted to study animals, the zoology, you know, but you need bio, you need chem. And then of course, there wasn't a marine science program or anything like that offered. Mm -hmm. But when I got into there, I met a few people and I was just like, I love one, the Bahamas. I love animals. How do I combine that love? And lo and behold, here I am now in conservation. So getting into conservation and conservation education and, of course, sustainability has definitely been something that was a, a bit of a, a you know, whirlwind for me because I would find it in whatever I did. So whatever occupation that I uh, focused on, whatever, whatever I decided to put my hands to, there was always something in there that related to conservation and, of course, education as well. That's a really... Definitely. I think um, a lot of uh, conservationists always have that similar, you know, love animals and want to do all the good works. But can you can you also just talk to us about well, what is sustainability? So sustainability is not there's not an agreed upon term by a lot of different uh, countries or persons who talk about it. It's just like, oh, yeah, we want to be sustainable. But like, how? What is it? A lot of persons, we start to hear the term come up recently it's not it has been something that's been talked about for a while but now you hear it a whole lot more so sustainability by the un is basically just um, meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs and for me sustainability is a balance it's a balance between how we exist um, on the earth in the present so it's just ensuring that you know we are preserving uh, the things that we enjoy for our future generations to be able to use those same things as well. I like that definition. And it's unfortunate that in every sector, I think there's always a couple of words where it's like, we agree on this definition, but some people agree on this other one. So thank you for yeah. defining that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's the little petty things. <laughs> yeah, it's all over. It's all over. And honestly, it's just basically how you define it. But mm -hmm. one thing that, uh, you know, you can get from the root word is to sustain, so to preserve. So that in itself is just uh, something that will always be when you're talking about sustainability. We want to keep intact what we enjoy. Right. Or get to experience. Definitely. And I I think, I think people use um, conservation and sustainability almost interchangeably sometimes. Yeah. But <laughs> if, if possible, can you can you say what what one of the differences is between like what conservation is and what sustainability is? 
Well, to be honest with you, conservation and sustainability, it is used interchangeably, but it depends on how you define it. Mm. How uh, I know how I define conservation is something that relates mostly to uh, nature and uh, the environment. It's for me, conservation is a bracket of sustainability. So sustainability, a lot of persons link it to the environment because, of course, one of the ultimate goals is to, you know, fix climate change, combat uh, and have climate action and, of course, to preserve the environment. But what a lot of persons don't look into with sustainability is how it relates to uh, the country itself with uh, the UN 17 Sustainable Goals, it not only just touches on climate action, uh, land, uh, water, water and land, it also touches on, you know, ensuring that we have equal rights. It's ensuring that we are we fix injustice, injustices as well. So for me, sustainability covers a broad spectrum, whereas conservation for me focuses on more the environmental aspect of it. Actually, I never thought about it like that. It, it definitely does seem that whenever you talk about conservation, I guess just maybe because I just work in the field, a lot of times I automatically associate it with people as well. But you're right. Like when you think about when, when you're conserving something, yes, you have it for the sustainability of like this thing for people, but it really is just focused on we want nature, we want these animals and these habitats to be preserved. Exactly. Whereas sustainability, like you said, it touches on the different aspects of people. So yeah, sustainability is definitely more people focused versus mm -hmm. the conservation thing. Mm -hmm. And so when you get into the whole concept of sustainability management, um, what does that really entail? So that just basically focuses on business. And although being in the hospitality industry for uh, almost 10 years, I've been in conservation for a bit more than that as well. Mm -hmm. So being able to see how businesses such as hosp hospitable businesses operate right. is honestly a gift for a lot of persons who enter into that field. Because if you were interested in, let's say, entrepreneurship and things like that, seeing how those large operations run, it can help you to you know, align with align your own business to those same standards and implement those particular standards. So when it comes for me to sustainable management, I speak on sustainable development. And it's not just, okay, this is the country's, the, gov the government's goal to go ahead and become more sustainable. It looks at how do these individual businesses now able to manage sustainably as well. So we look at how are you being a responsible business? How are you contributing to the culture of the Bahamas, the community of the Bahamas, not just the environment? So sustainability management, it, it encompasses all of those sectors, responsible business, culture, community, conservation, environment, all of those things for a business, particularly is what I speak on about it, but as well as when you talk about sustainable development in relation to the countries that implement these 17 United Nations goals. Yeah, that's powerful. Because again, even, and I always like to tell my guests and, and some of the viewers, whenever I have guests on and I and I have these topics, it's because I'm just genuinely interested in learning about it. And I never, I never heard someone explain sustainability management as well as you did. So thank you for that. And it's really... Yeah, it's a really interesting concept because, again, like for me, um, conservation and sustainability have always just been this thing that is just always a given. It's something that's always mm -hmm. together, but there really is a distinction between the two. And it's important for individuals and businesses and organizations to know that. And so I know one of the topics that we're going to touch on today, which we can jump right into right now, of course, our natural resources are what make our tourism product. As we yeah. all know, so people come here. Exactly. <laughs> you took the words right out my mouth. So, mm -hmm. how, and then we have a lot of entrepreneurs that are actually developing tourism based businesses, and some of them take off really quickly. Mm -hmm. And even some of the bigger ones, even, do not consider sustainability. So, can you? Maybe give some tips. I don't. I don't want to get too much from you for free, you know. <laughs> but how can a how can a tourism based business, big or small? Mm -hmm. incorporate sustainability and even conservation as well into their business? Well, to be honest with you, it's not as difficult as a lot of persons may make it seem because in your, if you're being a sustainable business, it also means that you're sustaining your finances and you're able to operate for a long period of time. So it's also important for small businesses to be able to implement certain things so mm -hmm. that they can last for a long time. And that's one of the important things of being a responsible business. So for small businesses, tourism, oper tourism based businesses, how you want to be more sustainable is pretty simple. You research, you get a management plan in place. It doesn't have to be something that's 
a vast 50 page management plan, or you could even just have a simple policy, uh, something like we will we'll save you more money as well. You want to purchase efficient energy, efficient bulbs, energy efficient uh, items as well, as well as ensuring that you are reducing your water use, things like that, that could make you more sustainable. But putting in that management plan doesn't just focus on like we talked about the environment, putting in that management plan focuses on your your employees. How are your employees benefiting from working under you? Your customers, it also focuses on your customers. How are you implementing things to ensure that you increase your customer, your customer base, as well as how are you implementing things to ensure that you are bringing up a profit? So when you look into sustainability, one of the things that you could also do is get someone who's a financial advisor. Implement that into your small business. Because sometimes we only look at uh, how much we can make. But even when we implement things that are sustainably sourced items or financial advisors, we look at how we cut costs from these things. Because sometimes getting the, the profit doesn't really change, right? Right. When you're in the business, it doesn't really impact. The profit doesn't really just continue to fluctuate, right? Sometimes you're getting the same amount of profit uh, from off of whatever it is that you're selling or you're servicing. But how do you then take away, let's put the profit on the side, the revenue on the side. How do you make your business more sustainable? How do you decrease your energy use? Like I mentioned before, how do you plan for, you know, tough days, tough weeks? Sometimes you're not able to, to generate as much as you normally do. What is your plan that you have in place? That's what it, sustainable management basically is. It's ensuring that you are able to sustain yourself as a business, as a tourism-based business, because you know during September, ain't no one really traveling like that. So during those those low months when you know, and I trust me, everybody know when there's no not a lot of guests either coming to the Bahamas on property cruise ship. Yes, you have that information. And being in the Bahamas, living in the Bahamas, you have, were able, you're privy to this type of information as well. So you already know what your slow months are going to look like, especially if, you, if you've been operating for even, let's say, a year. You know what your slow months look like. You have to be able to, uh, put, to be put in place those different uh, things that you need to ensure that you sustain yourself during those slow months. One of the things that I love to mention, of course, is uh, finding sustainably sourced items. And it's not just because oh, we want to protect the environment. It's because those... <laughs> <laughs> those items that are sustainable, they also help you in the long run. You reduce your costs, your operational costs as well with using energy efficient stuff, reducing your water usage, as well as buying items that are reusable. Definitely. See, and gosh, I feel like I'm getting a whole, like, I feel like I want to open up my own business now. <laughs> but, and I think it's so important. I think this topic, right, is so important. Again, like I said, a lot of people are having tourism-based businesses. And I find that it's, uh, and I hope I don't get, get punched in the back for this, but I just think a lot of businesses here, especially the tourism-based one, because they're so lucrative, a lot of Bahamians think it's just, let me just put something somewhere and just run it. And they don't think about the things you just mentioned. They don't think about financially planning for slow months. I mean, and when things happen like a bad hurricane or a pandemic, then you find yourself with employees and even owners who, who did not plan their money adequately for these lower and slower months. And even when it comes to just thinking about how Start, if you start with something more sustainable, the it may be more expensive in the in the beginning, right? In the beginning, yeah. Long term, you will see these savings as opposed to just doing the quick thing, cheap quick the cheap thing in the beginning, and then towards the end, this thing breaking down every other month. Now you got to pay for repairs. It's putting more gas in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Like it's, so, it's so important, especially for tourism based businesses, to to think about how you can help the environment because this is what's bringing these tourists here as well as how you can sustain your business greener and more long-term. So, so one of the things that uh, with a lot of Bahamian businesses that I have noticed specifically is that we only care about the Benjamins at the end of the day. Well, in our case, it's the Marlins. We only care about that at the end of the day. So we, <laughs> right? So we, we, there are a lot of amazing business ideas out there. Like there are so much and you see them popping up at the end of the day. And a lot of times if you go on different Facebook groups in the Bahamas, 
a lot of times you see different complaints about how this business could operate better in terms of customer service. Customer service is having good customer service is sustainability as well. It Don't really get me <laughs> Listen, I, I know a thing or two working in the Bahamas and as well as hiring in the Bahamas, customer mm -hmm. service sometimes is at an all time low. And that's something that we have to work on in order to sustain our business. But it can't just be, oh, I'm going to sell this today and I make two dollars from this and then I go and I spent, I put the money on me. Sometimes in order for your business, well, not sometimes, most of the time in order for your business to survive and strive, you have to put that money back into your business. This is not the time for you to buy the new Lexus that come out of the Honda. I was going to say, it's the Honda. It's the Honda, right? <laughs> I'm be buying these 91 Honda for like 12 <laughs> And I'm like, what? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and the car is a bad investment. <laughs> anyway. And let me see if I could use proper economic terms, but I know cars depreciate in value. Thank but you. for some reason in the Bahamas, and I've heard this from a lot of um, the foreigners that I work with, they're like, in the Bahamas is the only country where you could buy in 2022, maybe an 09 March for 4000 and probably in a couple of years, you could go sell that for 3500 only in the Bahamas, and that and that's so true. That blows my mind. But <laughs> we didn't even get into that. Yeah, that that's a whole, whole other topic. topic. <laughs> whole other topic. But but while we're still on the theme of how to make businesses more sustainable, I know that there are a lot of people watching that may not have businesses. They may work mm -hmm. somewhere else already, or they just want to know how, as an individual in their home life and or in their work life, how can they be more sustainable? Is there any way that because I know you mentioned um, to me finding your place in sustainability? How can yeah. someone do that? So sustainability, sometimes when you listen to different conversations, uh, it could seem like a lot. It could seem like I'll never get there. And one of the things that I like to talk about when it comes to persons who, you know, may not really understand what it is, taking it one step at a time. So over time, uh, there has been a lot of, of persons who, not a lot of persons, but there have been a few persons popping up that would speak on, you know, we need to stop using cars and ride more bikes. We need to do this. And I don't know if you remember that. That's a little Zen plug there. But there have been like a lot of persons who would speak on these things, right? And we ignored them. And now that we can't, we can't ignore those persons, we can't ignore sustainability any longer. So don't fret, the word itself is a broad term, but the, the task and the tips that you can put in place, it doesn't have to be something extensive as buying an energy efficient vehicle. But if you, if you got it like that, get it. <laughs> but if you don't, it could be as simple as, uh, like I said, buying reusable utensils, switching to energy efficient bulbs, getting like those little solar paneled, paneled uh, not solar panels for your house, but solar powered items because they sell those on Amazon as well. It could be as simple as when you buy something, look for someone who is sustainable. Look for someone who, who cares about the environment. It could be as simple as not wasting your clothes. There are a lot of different YouTube videos where you're able to, you know, cut and stitch this and that, and you get a whole new outfit. It's called repurposing items as well and reusing the items. And of course, reduce, reduce the amount of items that you need. So there's this term minimalist, and uh, that's a scary term sometimes because ain't no one just want to have like, oh, this little bit of stuff, right? But you could become, I would like to call a conscious shopper, a conscious person when you just reduce the amount of things that you feel that you need. But sometimes the things that we feel we need is just literally the things that we want. It's not actually an actual need. So if you have, say, uh, three headphones, iPhone headphones there, do you really need this other headphone? Do you really need this other piece of clothing in the same color, the same style? Do you? Exactly. So you could just reduce. <laughs> you could just reduce the waste. Reduce your waste. And then there we go like shopping a lot, right? So I recently had a conversation with persons who were interested in bulk buying, bulk mm -hmm. shopping, right? Um, and then there are so many things that you could really, you don't have to buy in bulk because you could buy a more sustainable item for it. That's true. Or yeah. you could DIY sustainable items. There is so much different persons on TikTok 
YouTube that go into how you can be more sustainable. And then, of course, it's also more cost efficient. Definitely. Because I know I've started... Um... I just want to be a minimalist. <laughs> and I think I think the biggest thing that people and our people, but I'm gonna say people, <laughs> have to get over is almost like the vanity, right? Like when you start making the decision of wanting to be more sustainable, you have to get over that vanity of wanting to wear a new pair of shoes every other week. Like you can't be say, seen in the same thing twice when it's like, now nah, you can see me in my favorite shirt until this shirt can't wear no more because I have a washing machine. And exactly. a solar power dryer, but my clothes on the line. This call because my I hope my mommy in on this call because trust me, she may think I'm talking about her with her 17 million shoes. <laughs> now you're talking about her. <laughs> but and, and that's what it is. I think if if you're really an individual who is trying to incorporate sustainability in your life, even if you don't want to touch the clothes aspect, I've seen so many amazing products like the reusable cotton um, swaps. Right. Mm -hmm. Reusable hand towels that are literally just some cloth towels you use and you wash them and you rewrap them. There's, I think there's even reusable toilet paper. And I know that sounds gross. Yeah. Say, oh, that's so <laughs> that ain't me. Uh, yeah, that's oh. fine. You can tell me. <laughs> well, there okay. you go. <laughs> well, it's out now. <laughs> but, but yeah, there are so many items that it's so, it's like so many ways now. Um, tell you got everyone laughing at you. So many ways now that you can actually become more sustainable, even if it's just as simple as having a reusable cup, like instead of going to a, cause I know COVID made it a bit difficult, but I remember as simple as going to Starbucks or a lot of these other coffee shops, you could take your own cup and that saves a whole mm -hmm. reusable cup from being used and then thrown in the garbage, reusable straws, like all of these different things. So the clothes and shoes topic may be a bit touchy for people living in our our area because <laughs> trust me i know like i i was once like that you know where i see myself now with all of these clothes some of them don't even fit no more and i'm like why i still have these in my closet oh, like i really cool. could get rid of them <laughs> yeah so and right and you could either upscale it or you no know, would you what was the term you use on upscale that's for items uh, repurpose repurpose it or donate it if your clothes oh, are still in good condition do not be afraid to donate it that but keeps it in the cycle of life like it doesn't die and it doesn't just get put in a landfill so <laughs> moving along <laughs> so, what did you say, so if we had to break down um some tips for somebody who wants to be maybe more sustainable on their job like they don't have a tourism-based business they work for an organization what are some ways that they could be more sustainable like not in their home life in their work life now <laughs> So something that persons who want to be, you know, ambassadors for their business, uh, they want to implement different things. And obviously this would also be very cost effective. It's putting in reusable items into their, into the area. You know, if you have a lot of persons who use different uh, coffee cups, utensils and all that stuff. And of course, like you said, COVID did make it a bit more difficult to implement certain things, but now we're, you know, moving, moving away from it. And you could even just have a person, hopefully have a persons bring their own items that are reusable, like mugs, or you could also implement where you uh, have, instead of water bottles, you get a water cooler, like a, a dispenser machine and get the five gallon jugs. At least that's very sustainable. They reuse those bottles and they send them back out rather than the multiple numerous plastic bottles that uh, we have to throw away daily because there is nothing really in place for recycling plastic on the island and having some being on an island nation it's so difficult to get into recycling so that's why i always promote reducing reducing yes. your waste as much as possible and as a business especially if it's a business where you don't have to use a lot of paper like go paperless yeah and you don't have to just, print everything yeah you don't have to print everything and or reuse the papers that you print but if you notice, like this is the digital age. So how you get things like uh, different electronics, you have things like Kindle where you could read your books on. So begin to implement those things like QR codes. Everybody mm -hmm. have a smartphone nowadays. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to print off the entire, uh, one thing that I noticed businesses doing uh, because of COVID and I'm a little bit happy that something came that put the, the thought in person's mind to be more sustainable was they start printing off their menus. Yes. They use the QR codes. I love that. Yeah. And 
it, I hope that they notice how much their cost has went down for, for operating costs because mm -hmm. now you don't have to go ahead and print these millions and replace all of these different menus. Now you just have to update your online database. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. pretty much it. So just getting into, if you want to be the person who goes to uh, your boss or your superior and let them know about ways to be more sustainable, one tip that I would al always say is you come with a problem, come with a solution. So if there is an issue with them using something, then show what the solution is and show how it's beneficial for the business. And I promise you sustainability is always beneficial for the business. Definitely. Because I remember um, an organization I worked at, um, and just like an anecdotal thing, we would always print off large documents. I'm talking about 80 to over 100 pages. And a lot of times, I would see the older ones that were printed, they were just sitting there. And so I said, well, for these new ones that we're doing, we're updating these documents. How about we make PDF files and we put them on USBs? You could give them out like that and people can have the document and they also have a USB that they can use for whatever they want with the extra space, put the brochures, put pictures on that. And that became something that that organization implemented. And I think that they still use today. You may still end up printing a few hard copies, but not nearly as much as the ones you have just sitting there that are collecting dust. And even to the same tune of water, having a water cooler, if you're too small to even get a water cooler because I know I think you did like pay for maintenance and stuff of that. You have mm -hmm. one of those little Brita filters that you can stick right on the faucet. Yep, definitely. <laughs> That's it. And, and as simple as that, now your tap water is now drinkable water. So there's so many little ways that you can make your workplace, you know, more sustainable. I know I was fortunate that this organization also had a bunch of different mugs and a sink area to wash. So you didn't have to worry about taking cups. But if you do work in a workplace and you want to be more sustainable and you see that the coffee cups that they have are those paper ones, just bring your own, bring your own reusable cup. You know, it's cooler, it's cuter, it keeps it warmer longer, you know? So, <laughs> and you get to get whatever you want on it. You could put your name, you could put how you feel, you could put an email on. <laughs> That's really the how you feel. Like, please don't talk to me until my coffee is gone. <laughs> like that mug. <laughs> Right. Uh, all right. So can you let us know um, what are some things maybe that you do, you know, that are conservation and sustainable related, sustainability related? Well, in my personal life. Yeah. So in my personal life, one of the things that I like to do is, of course, I spoke about re using reusable items, of course, and reducing the amount of funds that are spent. But one of the things that has helped me with that is being finding ways how to organize myself where you're not obviously overspending and overpopulating your house. So how do you organize? How do you organize everything that you buy? Let's say if you buy, the, I got these real cute earrings the other day. Mm -hmm. I mean, but we could buy these uh, so something that looks exactly like it a million times, but it's something it's just because you can't find it mm -hmm. or you just want something new or something cute. But I wore this like a gazillion times and I'm going to get every use out of it. Yeah. Um, other things that I do, like I said, are the reusable items of buying local. So I love to support local businesses. Mm -hmm in the Bahamas. And a lot of persons like, how is that sustainable? We go back to it. Sustainability is not just about the environment. It's about buying local, shopping local. So I, one of the persons who I support uh, in terms of hair care, I support, <laughs> you know, who I have to say. And you know, I'm about to back you up with it too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have uh, my thing right next to me where I, I, can, where I can talk about it. Uh, but buying local hair care, by uh, supporting make uh, local makeup um, creators and things like that. Even when you support local farms, there are numerous persons popping up invested in farming, whether it be hydroponics uh, and aquaponics, they are here. So buy local, support local, support your local seamstresses as well. You don't have to always import your clothes and things like that. Support your local fishermen. You don't always need the salmon. Get you some snapper. Girls, <laughs> I'm going to start it on the salmon. Guys, there's no true wild caught salmon. That could be a whole nother episode, but let me say it again. I know, <laughs> I know your packaging says wild caught salmon. It's not. It's not wild yeah, caught. It's, it's really not. It's, but you know, the best fish is the fresh fish are the ones you buy from home. Yeah. So yeah, support. Yes. 
and less of carbon footprint. No Amazon. Amen. <laughs> I like that. But yeah, so buy local, shop local, support. You, you want some little cute little knickknacks and things that support uh, buying uh, from your local uh, craft persons as well, mm -hmm. your local craft shops. And not just individuals, uh, big businesses, large organizations as well. Support local artists. Support like I know different organizations want to import different things, but there are so there's so much talent in the Bahamas. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is look yeah. around. It's right here. And that's how we become more sustainable as a country as well. We just have to be able to learn how to support our own. And our own has to be able to sustain themselves through customer focus, associates focusing as well. Yeah. I I think um, one of the biggest things too is a lot of times it's always word of mouth is very powerful, but sometimes I'll find out about locally made products that I had no idea existed, you know, <laughs> and I'm just like, now I've definitely, I've taken an active role, even if it costs a bit more to just support a local person that's doing, um, doing something sustainable or any sort of business. So like you were saying, especially when you go to like the farmer's market on Gladstone, I was so sorry. You can oh, I love that. I love that. Did you get the cane juice? I love the cane juice. I didn't get cane juice, but I did stop to a booth that had, she had um, vegan mutton roti. So good. And it was made with seton. It's like a gluten kind of like meat substitute. So yummy. And there, you know, and I, I always make up the oyster mushrooms. Uh, mm -hmm. It's so many things that you can get here that are cheaper and better quality because it's homegrown um, versus things that have been packaged, frozen, shipped, refrigerated, left to thaw out. So always support local. Um, I Don't get me started on meat consciousness as well. No, I know sometimes we want to have like three sets of meat. We want the snapper, <laughs> we want the pork chop and the chicken. So sometimes how we can be more sustainable, like I said, is just not by over consuming. Right. So you not just buying local. I mean, you could buy local produce as well as local uh, meat as well, but sometimes you just have to learn how to cut back. And, you know, as a culture, we overindulge a lot. Like I didn't realize that that was something that was, strange for us to do until I start to go to other restaurants and I see exactly the portion sizes that are being served. We eat a lot of food. And then afterwards we want something sweet. <laughs> Hold on, now let's don't attack me. That's me right there. Okay. I, I love me my something sweet. <laughs> but I definitely I've noticed um we do eat a lot of meat. I know oh, wow. that and I remember visiting St. Lucia and, and Barbados. And I was so fascinated that both of them, when you find um, restaurants or like buffet style things, it's so much homegrown vegetables. It's like you got your mm -hmm. bread, fruit, you got your homegrown bananas and plantain. Um, what was something else? I can't even remember. But point is, but whereas in the Bahamas, you got your peas and rice, then you got your chicken, <laughs> your macaroni, coleslaw, potatoes. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> You have the chicken. Much. It's a lot. It's honestly a lot. And then sometimes they want to add the kunk to it <laughs> every Sunday. Yeah. So you can touch on kunk right now, right? Yeah, you could take it away. Touch on the kunk. <laughs> you want me to touch on the kunk? We there. We here. Oh, we might as well. Okay. We <laughs> okay. Please stop supporting fishermen that are picking up juvenile kunk. You could see that these are baby kunk. It's at every, You can see it. All you have to do is point it out. A lot of the things that we are that is uh, basically happening in the world today is because of our demand for it. So if we learn how to become minimalist or uh, stop over consuming and actually point out when something is wrong, because we shouldn't have juvenile kunk inside our kunk salad, kunk fritter, crack kunk, kunk and rice, none of that stew kunk. It should all be adult kunk. And even though there is not a closed season, we have to really push con conservation, queen yeah. con conservation. It's very important. Yeah, I definitely, I back you up a thousand percent. I think it's super important, especially for Bahamians to just realize that it, it takes nothing to hold the vendor or the fisherman accountable, you know. Nothing. All you have to do is say, can I see the shell that this came out of? And if more, more consumers took an active role in conservation <laughs> you'd be surprised right like you'd be surprised because the fishermen only they're doing their job 
they do them with cells. If baby conch stops selling, they're going to stop catching it, you know? So I think a lot of times even conservationists um, get kind of hit with this stick that we always attack in the fishermen. Nah, we attack in the consumers too. Like, please. Exactly, no, because it's only the demand for it that's getting, that's helping the fishermen to make these decisions. Right. And, you know, I have met a few fishermen and say, man, a lot of can hold that. We just don't know where to go. That's not the truth. <laughs> it's not the truth, guys. Mm -hmm. We have to be more conscious in all aspects of our life. Now is the time. Yeah. And it's, it's moderation too, right? Like I think yeah. when it comes to, you know, our NASA grouper, even our snappers, I, again, with the conch or even crabs and stuff, it's always just important just to be mindful um, and be moderate. You don't need yes. to eat conch every day. You don't need to you eat snapper every day. Your you body, should. you know, to run optimally, like mm -hmm. I've been plant-based for almost a year, but I don't, I don't push that down people's throat where it's like, you need to stop eating meat. Do what's best for your lifestyle, but consider mm -hmm. just not having meat on every meal. You'd be surprised how your health changes and how mm -hmm. your pocket changes. <laughs> There. Meat is it's expensive. expensive. It is expensive, expensive, you know, and and it's it's better for your body. So mm -hmm. that's my I one little plug. <laughs> your vegan plug. <laughs> yeah, plant based plug. I think when when people are vegan, uh, they yeah, look yeah. at it as like like I have no problem with people eating animals. I have no problem with people eating anything <laughs> that they want to eat. That sounded so cruel. I have no problem with people eating animals. <laughs> yeah, I just. I've chosen not to. <laughs> you know, and that's fair. And that's fair. And that's one of the things that uh, I think has separated us uh, so much, not just as a, not just as Bahamians, but globally, it's just that, oh, you need to stop doing this. You need to stop doing that. When in actuality, we just need to limit uh, the amount of things that we're doing and consuming. And even in relation to being plant-based, you still have to be a conscious consumer and you still should source local. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I don't want to hang up too long <laughs> on the the not eating yeah. meat thing. Because sustainability, again, as we were pointing out, all aspects of your life, whether it be the clothes you wear, driving less, make sure organizing your errand run so that you're not up and down. You know, if you can park somewhere and walk a little further, that's good too, you know. Um, being Carrying reusable items, using them at work. When you have your lunch, packing them in Tupperware, maybe not always buying lunch. And you'd be surprised some places, um, and there's another story, when I worked at uh, the BNT from across the street from us was like this breakfast place that everybody went to. And, you know, every time you get breakfast, you get the little, um, it was styrofoam at the time, but I'm guessing now they use in reusable. Reusable, mm -hmm. I mean, not reusable, compostable. So mm -hmm. one day, you know, a few of us was kind of like, I wonder if we bring our own containers. Like, we come there every day, you know? And sure enough, they said, yeah, if you bring your own containers, we'll take 50 cents off too. Look at that. Look at that. So not only are you now saving money, but you're saving them money too because they don't have to waste another container on you. And so you'd be surprised how other businesses might be willing to say, yeah, if you bring a Tupperware, don't expect more, but we'll take 50% off and, and put it in whatever Tupperware you bring. So I yeah. encourage people to, if you have a regular spot that you always get food from, it doesn't hurt to ask. They're already familiar with you. Make sure clean your Tupperware too. My goodness. <laughs> Don't bring no dirty Tupperware to these people's business. But a lot of Bahamians, you know, we have our regular spots. You know, we're very friendly. We socialize. These people probably know you by name. They know your order before you walk in the door. It takes nothing just to say one day, hey, if I was to bring my own Tupperware to help reduce the waste, would you guys put my food in them? Yeah, that's all. That's all. And we have a lot of plates and cups and Tupperware with no lids inside the house. I know we do. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I was already about 40 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just move to the next question. Do you have any ways that you think viewers um, or anyone listening can get involved with sustainability and conservation efforts? Um, well, the different efforts that happen are basically on social media. Yes, there are so many different organizations, and you mentioned one like the BNT. Uh, you have the Nature Conservancy, three different things, and you just have to call and look around and get in contact with certain people. Sometimes mm -hmm. you want to know how you take something seriously when you start to connect with people who are doing the same thing that you're interested in. So a lot of times we say, "Oh, I could be more sustainable." Who did you connect with? 
Mm -hmm. Who did you meet? What bought? There are so many beach cleaners. The Shanti, you and I met from your beach cleaner. I was just going to say, I even in my Instagram live, my behind the scenes, I said, you know, it's so funny. Like I met you last year, one of my beach cleanups and we hit it off. And I was like, I'm happy I finally got you on the show because it's so interesting just to show people that there are other behaviors out there that are interested in doing the same things as you. You just have to get out and yeah. do it. So That's it's like you said, follow some of these organizations. Um, you have so many conservation organizations and there's always something going on. Just follow them, get involved. If you don't want to donate financially, donate some of your time and energy. It my, The cleanups used to be two hours. I'm going to relaunch in April, pending, coming soon to a beach near you, right? <laughs> right? And so, and it takes nothing just to take two hours of your time. You feel good. You've contributed significantly to your environment and you've just made the world a little bit greener. <laughs> and that's all. And that's all it takes. And it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, you haven't met anyone before. You don't know anyone there. All that stuff. At the end of the day, if you really want to do it, you do it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a lot of us go out. We don't know anybody, but we meet people there. And it's we're not we don't have we're not gonna bite you if you want to come and help save the planet. <laughs> we're gonna hold your hand and say, "Come along with us." <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. And even um, what you said was just so important. Don't just you know, Mal could say anything, right? Like I've had so many people tell me, "Oh, you know, I I want to participate in a beach cleanup, or I want to use reusable items. Just do it. Just, just do it." And, and even that brings me to my next point. Do you have any like life lessons that you've learned like through your work and through your career that you'd want to share? Like a motto or like, you know, like a mantra that you have for people? Uh, well, one of the things that, and this is a poem that I usually, I'm not going to say the whole poem, but just the title of the poem and it's called Invictus and it means unconquerable. So sometimes on your journey, you have so many persons, if you want to get involved with conservation and sustainability, some persons just don't have that vision. They never got understood what the idea of it was. And those are not the persons to have the conversation with, especially if you want to become an entrepreneur. Sometimes you just can't tell certain people what your vision is. So one of the one of the, the mantras that I live by is Invictus, to be unconquerable. It me it just me, you know, accessing my own fate, um, making whatever I want to happen happen and believing in myself because i've been told that what i wanted to do didn't make sense when i was in high school <laughs> and you have a lot of persons who have that mindset but honestly it's just an education thing for them they don't know but you know and all you have to do is find a way to make it work and then on top of that put in the work a lot of times we want things to fall in our lap and that's just not how it works in this life you have to go after it set your goal write the plan make it plain Go after it, meet the persons, become unconquerable in what it is that you want to do and what you want to achieve. Oh, I feel like you're talking to me. <laughs> I, I needed this word on this Good Siren Sundays. So. <laughs> <laughs> we got an amen from Kerwin on YouTube. Uh, that's definitely powerful. And I think that is very encouraging, especially for, for any viewers or listeners who are interested in diving into this sector as well. A lot of times you kind of don't know where to start. Yes. Um, you don't know if you can fit in. There's so much room. There are so many people. Like one thing I've noticed about conservationists, we have some that are introverted and we have a lot that are extroverted, but all of them, everyone in this sector is more than happy to talk to you about what they do and give you um, opportunities or tell you about opportunities to either go to school, to volunteer, to intern. Because yeah. there's so many out there, not only locally, you know, like internationally, um, there's regionally, there's so many things that you can get involved with, especially now post COVID. One of the things that came out of that, that was so beneficial is virtual workshops. Like it's easier now, like you don't have to be flying people there. So they'll, they'll say like, this is for anyone in the world to attend, you know, and you can always access that information. The internet is there. People are there. Just connect all my guests, including this one. Now you can see their social media handles and LinkedIn, just connect with them. And all it takes is ask one question. How can I get involved in this sector? And you'll be surprised how easy it is. It's so easy and it's very interdisciplinary. Um, mm -hmm. Like you've just been talking about business side of this. There are so many sides of this that we need more people doing. So, and a lot of kinds of issues aren't really business minded, but we could benefit <laughs> from it. Like, we could definitely benefit from it. But um, in closing, uh, last question for you. Who is someone in this sector, local or international, that inspires you and why? 
uh, who inspired me specifically to get into conservation. So my grandma, like I talked about, God rest her soul, uh, she has always pushed me to be in a doctor or something, but she always knew that I loved animals and she always encouraged that love of animals. Uh, but there have been so many persons and so much support from family, uh, friends, and then even like my lecturers. And that's when, when we talk about, all you have to do is just talk to somebody. Uh, one lecture that I could just mention off the top of my head, Jacqueline Chisholm Lightburn from- I always hear about um, her. Yes, like she push, she pushes you and she aligns you with the things that you need if you want to get into this field. So she was very instrumental in, you know, me, me making the decision to focus more on maybe marine based, but also conservation conservation science and education as well so uh it was a lot of different persons you know they say it takes a village i definitely have my village here uh watching as well and, <laughs> uh, and a lot of persons who i've come into contact with have also assisted me uh but i attribute that to all of them my success to all of them thank you guys oh and i'm sure they're here watching you even though you call your mommy out but <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for being on this show. Uh, thank you to all the viewers and thank you for all the listeners for riding this wave with us on another episode of Siren Sundays. So excited to follow your journey and we could definitely link up on some more cleanups. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> for all sure. <laughs> definitely. So thanks again and I hope to see you all soon. Bye everyone. Bye -bye. Oh, wait. Oh, before we go, the last thing. Right. So oh, yes. I'll pop it up here. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So we are partnering, we, me, partnering with Earthuitive. So if you are interested in getting a reusable utensil kit, when you know, we talk a lot about reusable items, so this is your chance to do it and receive 10% off, use promo code Epiphany. It's our responsibility, our commitment, and our planet. I love it. Say that <laughs> one more time. Our responsibility, our commitment, our planet. Definitely. And I, I implore everyone to go out. Earthuitive is an amazing company, and I've gotten a few things from them already. Definitely going to get some more, and I'm probably also going to use this promo code. I <laughs> encourage you all to do the same thing. <laughs> and awesome. So thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you guys next week. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>